Hello, my name is Gabriel, and I am here to tell you about my game, Fauna of Fangaland. This is a two to four player turn-based board game where players create their own maps using these tiles and move along the different paths on these tiles to land in certain spots on the board to collect points. A little bit of background on the story world. The newly discovered island of Fangaland is teeming with life and adventure. Apart from one frontier settlement, the only humans on the island are explorers and prospectors in remote outposts or wandering through the jungle. Of the wonderful novelties this land brings, the most breathtaking are the new, completely undocumented species on this island. Like any other treasure, these species draw people from all over the globe. Some highly qualified, others less so. But you're in luck. It finally looks like you picked the right major back in your college days. In an ever increasingly explored world, this may be the last chance you get to make good money off of your degree as a wildlife biologist and finally pay off those student loans. But only if you can avoid the disease, wild beasts and poachers on this new land and even then, you'll only make a profit if you can beat all the other biologists and become the first one to publish a paper on these new species. Capture the island's smaller creatures, insects, and other invertebrates while searching for the evasive, highly unique creatures in the heart of the island's jungle. Collect enough information on the fauna of this land before anyone else, and you might just end up with a fortune when you get back home. Okay, let me start out by talking about the components and the game setup. So for components, we've got this board. You have the map tiles. This includes both these uh, terrain tiles and the creature tiles. You need these four decks of cards. We've got River Outpost, Frontier Settlement, Shortcut, and Bugs. You need uh, the player tokens. I'm using these these shells as player tokens, uh, freeze tokens. I'm using pennies as freeze tokens in this prototype. You need the pack animal tokens. That's these cutouts right here. And you need these strips of paper to indicate the creatures that each player has documented. All right, let's talk about setup. So to start out, lay the board on a flat surface, and then shuffle each of these decks of cards, the Bugs, Shortcuts, Frontier Settlement, and River Outposts. The next thing you're going to do is uh, place, make, make sure these uh, labels are placed on top of the decks, decks of cards because these cards are a little bit transparent and you don't want people to be able to see the next card in the deck. So make sure these labels are placed on top. To hide the top card. Next, place a right side up pack animal in front of each player. So I said this is a two to four player game. For this example, I'm going to uh, pretend we're having three players. So each person gets one pack animal. Next, have each person choose their player token. So one of these shells and place it on the little dot indicated start. So one for that player, one for this player, and one for this player. Next, hand out the freeze tokens, one per player. The next thing you do is you shuffle together all of these map tiles. Make sure they're randomized. I've already shuffled these, but uh, make sure they're shuffled. Shuffle them upside down so that you can't see which one is on top. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you are going to place a certain number of these on the board. So the number depends on how many players are playing. If you have two players playing, uh, you place the top six tiles. If there are three players, you place eight tiles, and four players, you place nine tiles. So we have three players, so I'm going to place the top eight tiles down. And I'm going to place them 
on the numbered spots on this board. So the first one will go on spot number one, second on spot number two, etc. All right, now that you've got those eight tiles down, take the top two tiles and you're going to set them in these locations next to the board. And then this stack right here will also go next to those. So these are the playable tiles. These two, these two tiles plus the top on this stack, these are the tiles that you can replace other tiles with. I will explain that in a moment. All right, now for the actual gameplay. I'll start out with a broad overview of the gameplay and then get down into the details. So this game is all about manipulating these path tiles on the board to create good paths for yourself and to block your opponent's paths. The goal of the game is to get points by landing on gold paths. These get you bug, bug cards. So any gold dot that you land on will get you a bug card, which is one point or to land on the creature eyes with that creature's tile lined up. Uh, I can show you an example here, and this was just uh, dealt out from the beginning. Sometimes you won't have any tiles that are lined up from the beginning, but here we have one. You can see this is the blue horned betta fish, and this is the blue horned betta fish's tile, and these are lined up, and you can see the eye through that hole. So if I were to follow this gold path and land there, I would get that creature, which is worth four points. The uh, blue paths, whenever you land on blue dots, those give you these river outpost cards, which will give you advantages in the game. Whereas the red dots, whenever you land on one of these, you'll have to draw a shortcut card, which will give you penalties. And the frontier settlement cards are just updated, uh, upgraded river outpost cards. I'll explain those in a minute. Now I'll talk about what a turn actually looks like. So every turn involves two simple steps. Uh, they must both be done and they have to be done in order. So the first of these steps is to move or replace a map tile. Uh, I'll start out by explaining moving a map tile. So to move a map tile, it's very simple. Just take any of these map tiles that are on the board. As long as a player token is not on it, take any of them and move them to any other spot on the map. Uh, a little caveat, if your token, if the paths do not connect to any tile, then you must move a map tile to a location where you can move on to it. So here I have no possible paths. Uh, it will always be like this at the beginning of the game. So I have to take one of these and move it here so that now I can follow one of these paths and get onto this tile. And replacing tiles. So replacing tiles is only an option. Uh, say you're a few moves into the game and you are on one of these tiles. It's only an option if you already have somewhere where you can move. And what replacing looks like is simply taking any of these tiles, again, that a player token is not on, removing it and replacing it with one of these three tiles here. So say I pick this one, put that there. I'm going to place this at the bottom of the stack and then place this in its spot. And so in this way, we will be cycling through this entire stack of uh, map tiles. And just to emphasize, when you're replacing a tile, you cannot move the tile's location. You're only changing which tile is in that spot. And because of this, uh, replacing is not an option at the beginning of the game because you're going to start out here and you need, <laughs> you need for there to be a tile here for you to move on to. And so replacing is not an option yet. So that's the first step in the turn order, move or replace a map tile. The second step is to move your player token. So say it's the beginning of the game, I moved that there. I'm going to follow one of these paths, uh, get onto this new tile, and then move until I reach this dot on that new tile. And say we're one move into the game, it's my next turn, 
just to demonstrate again, all of these paths will connect with another path on this new tile. So now I'm going to move uh, across this connection until I reach this new dot on this tile. Let me show you up close how the connections work. So these will all connect in different ways. Uh, you can see how the paths connect with each other. And as I showed you, you can move on to a different colored path from the one that you're on. You can move from blue to red as long as they connect. Now, once you're a few moves into the game, you might end up on the same tile as another player. This is okay, but you are not allowed to occupy the same dot as another player unless there are no other options for places where you can move. That will only happen very rarely. Now, once you have moved, you will end up on a blue, yellow, or red dot. Some blue or yellow dots will have holes in the tile. So you can see this yellow path leads to this yellow dot, except this is actually a hole in the tile. Uh, some blue paths also lead to holes in the tile like this. These are for uh, getting, uh, documenting the creatures, and then the blue paths are for getting the frontier settlement cards. The frontier settlement is right there, so when a blue path lines up, that's what activates the frontier settlement card. If these dots do not line up, so say I just landed on this dot here, it's, it's not lined up with the fish, the fish's eye, then it just performs its normal function as a yellow dot. And uh, same for the frontier settlement cards. Also, if I have already documented a creature, say I have documented that fish, and I leave and I come back, then because I cannot document the same creature twice, that just performs its normal function as a yellow dot at that point. The normal functions are as follows. If you land on a blue dot, you're going to take one of these river outpost cards. Uh, don't reveal this to other players. You can play this card immediately if applicable, or you can save it in your hands to play at a later time. The same goes for frontier settlement cards. You can play them immediately or save them. Uh, with the yellow dot, the normal function of a yellow dot is to draw a bug card. Uh, each bug card is worth one point. You place these face up in front of you immediately. Now, if you land on a, a creature tile that is lined up with its creature, you land on this yellow dot, then you have documented that creature. And what you're going to do is you're going to draw its corresponding little strip of paper here. This is the dodo parrot. I'm going to place this face up in front of me to indicate that I have documented the dodo parrot. And remember, you can only document each creature once. The red dots are shortcut paths. So as soon as you land on a red dot, what you're going to do is you're going to draw one of these shortcut cards, and this will be a penalty. This will happen immediately. So I'm going to place this face up here. Uh, sometimes you'll have a river outpost cards that cancels this out. If that's the case, you play that immediately and you can cancel out that penalty. Now, once you have drawn that card, you have the option of continuing on. Again, these are shortcut paths, so these can get you places faster. So now I can move to this next dot. Uh, now, this is also a red path, and so uh, I have to draw another shortcut card, but after that, I can even continue on again uh, to this dot here. So now let's talk about some additional rules, starting with the pack animal. Each person has one pack animal. The pack animal functions somewhat similarly to the shortcut paths. It allows you to move an additional space when you use it. You can use the pack animal any turn during your token moving phase. So to use the pack animal, you simply turn it upside down. That's how you indicate that it is used. Once you, once you have used it, you can't use it again until you restore it by playing a feed card. And these are found in the river outpost deck here. So once I play that, I can turn it back right side up and use it again. So what does the pack animal actually do? Well, 
like the shortcut paths, it allows you to move an additional space. So I could start here. I could use the pack animal. And that means I move to this dot and then I can move on to the next dot. And another option actually with both the pack animal and shortcut cards is you can use it to stay on the spot that you're already on. So say it's this turn. Um, this isn't advantageous at the beginning of the game, but later you might want to. You could move to here, use the pack animal to move back to where you already are. A major difference between using the pack animal and using a uh, shortcut path is when you use a pack animal, you do not draw a card for the middle dot that you land on. So if I'm here, and I use the pack animal to go to here and then to here, I'm only going to draw a card for this last river outpost dot that I land on. Uh, similarly, if I want to take a red path, say I'm here, I can use the pack animal not to move further, but to bypass this consequence. So say I start here, I use the pack animal, I can move here and then here, and I don't have to draw that, uh, that shortcut card because I use the pack animal, so I don't draw that middle card. In fact, you can even use the pack animal and a shortcut uh, path together. So how does this look? Well, let's say I start out here. So for every shortcut path that I use to take me further, I do have to draw that card. So say I move here and I choose to draw this card. I'm not using the pack animal right now. I choose to draw this and I take the consequences. And that allows me to continue on to here. And now I use my pack animal. Remember, I don't draw a card for here. And now I can continue on to there. All right, so now let's talk about some specific cards. I'll start with the River Outpost cards. So Feed, uh, I've already discussed this. You can play this at any time to restore your pack animal. Although you can only use your pack animal one time per, per turn, even if you have multiple feeds in your deck. Okay, next ones, uh, Gun, Bribe, and Medicine. So these are all sort of in the same category. Each of these cancels out one of the shortcut cards. Uh, there are four shortcut cards. One of them cannot be canceled out, but gun cancels out wild beast eat your pack animal, bribe cancels out poachers, medicine cancels out malaria. Pretty self-explanatory, it says that on the card. So let's move on to this next one, steal. So this says, play after moving onto the same tile as another player to steal one of their bug cards. Something important to note, you cannot use this if you start out on the same tile as another player. So let's say this is me, and let's say this person is here, and this is the beginning of my turn. So what I have to do is I move or replace a tile, and then I have to move my token. So unless I move back to this spot, I can't steal from this person because I have to play this after moving my token. Another thing to note, if this player does not have any bugs yet, then this card is kind of useless. And just some quick additional rules with the steal card. If you land on a tile with two other players, then you can pick which one to steal from. Uh, if your opponent has multiple bugs, you can choose which of their bugs to steal. Uh, you can play multiple steal cards in one turn. And if you are traveling along a shortcut path or using a pack animal, uh, you can just be passing through. Say I'm using my pack animal, I start here. I can pass through here. I can steal in the middle of my route, even if I'm about to continue on. So that's it for the steal card. Let's move on to the freeze card right here. So how this works is you play at the end of your turn to freeze a tile on the map. The way that I indicate that a tile is frozen is I take my penny, my freeze token, and I place it on that tile. So say I place, I play this card, I'm gonna put it in the uh, discard pile 
right here. And I'm going to place this penny here. Uh, now, no one can move or replace this tile until my next turn. At the beginning of my next turn, I'm going to take this off. This only lasts one turn order. And then I can move this tile or I can move another tile. You are only allowed to freeze one uh, tile per turn. Next up is Guide. You can play this tile at the beginning of your turn during the moving tiles phase. Uh, so this is to swap the positions of two tiles that are on the board instead of playing, instead of uh, moving or replacing a tile. Similarly to moving or replacing a tile, you cannot swap two tiles if either of them is frozen or has another uh, player token on it. Uh, and you are allowed to play multiple, multiple of these in one turn if you want. So that's it for the River Outpost cards. Let's talk about the Bug cards now. Uh, like I said, each of these are worth one point if you keep them. However, there's something else that you can do with Bug cards. You can lure all of the creatures on this island. So each creature has a bug that corresponds to it, which is its prey. So the uh, Blue Horned Betta Fish eats the Horn Beetle. The pygmy hog whale eats the viper snail, the dodo parrot eats the balloon fly, and the long-eared flying squirrel eats the dragon ant. There is one more bug card, which is the leaf worm. The leaf worm cannot be used to lure a creature. It can only be used for points. So let's talk about how luring a creature works. Let's say I have a balloon fly. Luring a creature only works when you're on the right tile and the tile is lined up with the creature. So you see this dodo parrot is lined up with the dodo parrot on the board, but you are on the wrong dot on that tile. So I'm on this blue dot instead of this yellow dot. So to lure, what I can do is if I have the right prey, I can discard this I lose this bug, and I'm going to use that to move to the creature's eye and get those four points. You do this after you have already done the first two parts of your turn. So let's say I started out here, I uh, moved a tile over here, then I moved here. I'm going to draw that uh, river outpost card, and then after that, I'm going to play that balloon fly, discard that, and that's going to move me to here. And then I will take the corresponding strip of paper to show that I have gotten that creature. The Frontier Settlement cards, there are only two of these, but I want to explain them briefly. Scout ahead, this is move or replace an additional tile. This happens during the first phase of your turn. Uh, you get to move that one tile, and then you can do that again. Pretty self-explanatory. Helicopter lift. So this one happens after you have moved. So, a little example. Say I am here. This is, this is sort of like luring, but more broadly applicable. Um, say I'm here, I move here. Well, if I want to play my helicopter lift card, that just immediately moves me to any other dot on this tile that I like. So let's say I can move there, and I discard this here. Uh, with the helicopter lift, you only draw a card for the last dot that you land on. I won't explain the shortcut cards because they're pretty self-explanatory, although I do recommend you look at them. There are four different types, so be aware of what they are. And the only other thing I need to explain is the end of the game. So the first person to, uh, to get 12 points triggers the final round of the game. Remember, each creature is worth four points and each bug is worth one point. Uh, once a player gets 12 points, then you finish out the round. So uh, let's say this is Jill, this is Joe. Um, let's say I started. Right, so let's say Jill gets uh, 12 points. Uh, Joe would get one more turn, but I would not because I was the one who started. So finish it out, and then um, the player with the most points wins. 
And just a little bonus, let me talk about a couple very simple strategies that are very successful in this game. So the first thing that you want to know is that uh, the thing that you want to do at first is to get to the middle of the board. Um, follow uh, either blue paths or yellow paths, probably um, as much as possible, uh, and get to the middle of the board fast. And I'll tell you why that is. It's because uh, all of these creatures, when you line them up with their location, with their location on the board, the yellow paths all face inwards. So, say I start here, I have this creature that is closest to me, right? This uh, long-eared flying squirrel is closest to me, but in reality, it's not as close as it looks, because to get to the eye, unless I have its bug and can lure it from, you know, this dot here, I have to go all the way around to here to follow these yellow paths to get to it. And so I have to be in the center of the board to get to any of these creatures. So get to the center as soon as possible. And that's it for how to play Fauna of Fangeland. I hope you enjoy the game.